So here is the main view. This is the first thing you'll see when you walk into the apartment. Please excuse my dead tulips over there. Um, and I do have one main grow light bulb just being the main source of the light in this corner. Um, but I do have nice northwest slash west facing windows, which bring in a lot of bright indirect light. And now that summer is coming around, um, I do get a lot of the sunset light um, when it hits like 7 or 8 p.m. It's really pretty when it hits the plants, especially in my partner's art room in there. Um, it's just like golden hour vibes. All right, so I'm going to start over here. Here I have my whale fin and my juniper. I'm pretty sure it's the juniper bonsai tree. Um, this is my second go at the juniper bonsai tree because uh, last year when I first started getting into plants, I bought one and I killed it because I didn't know the proper care for it. Now that I've done research, she's been here for a week and she's doing well and I'm very happy. So hopefully she stays like that. And this was my first wish list plant, and I was so happy I got it pretty quickly and per, for a pretty f uh, fair price, especially coming with the pot. This came separate, but I love it. And then over here on this media console, um, I really switch things around this corner a lot because. It gets a lot of um, light from the bulb, and sometimes my when my alocasia moves throughout the days, it'll move, and sometimes it'll reveal a lot of light. So I like to move the little ones around, like especially my propagations. I like to move them over here whenever my alocasia moves out of the way. But today, um, it's like it's clouding this corner, so I kind of like shoved these two hoyas under the light, but. Um, I actually don't know what Hoya this is. It's actually a cutting from a customer that he just donated to the shop. Hello. Hello, may I help you? Hello, ma'am. This isn't about you, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Move. Um, I don't know what Hoya this is, but I decided to give it a go, even though I was scared because I was like, oh no, I don't have the proper light for it, but as long as you have a grow light, everything changes for you. And I believe this one is the Crinkle 8. Um, but yeah, this one started to root, so I just recently put it in some soil. I'm really proud and very excited for any type of propagation. So these are, I hope they live. And then over here, look at my humidifier. And if you're wondering what humidifier it is, um, I'll link it in the description box below. Um, but over here, the main star, my second wish list plant, and it is the Alocasia Regal Shield. And if I were to have a favorite, like, family or species of plants or genus, I don't know the correct term, it would be Alocasias and Philodendrons right now. But I know Alocasias are very uh, prone to, like, spider mites and stuff, so... I think this will be the only alocasia I will own for now and the only one that I can handle. But um, yes, she uh, pushed out this new leaf recently. So velvet, oops, so velvety and there's like no imperfections, but I know that won't last long <laughs> because this was the other new leaf that she pushed out before this one and already there's a yellow spot, which I thought was like a sign of spider mites, but I recently gave her a shower, um, cleaned off her leaves, sprayed a shiz ton of neem oil, and I also fertilized her a little bit, um, but she's, she's doing well, and she's growing very tall. I mean, she's on a stand, but since when I got her, she, this was the tallest leaf, and now like the baby one's like the tallest one, so I'm very proud of her. And then below here, since um, the alocasia's leaves are pretty big, they kind of create like a shady area down here. I put my snake plants down here. So I have the Zelanica, my Laurenti, Laurenti, whatever people want to pronounce it. And then my Moonshine. Yes, 
I love my snake plants and they just kind of look nice all together because I before I had them all like spread around the apartment but I kind of like them grouped together right here since um the light gets like blocked a lot from the alocasia leaves and then over here I have my little uh pothos cocktail I have the enjoys enjoy yeah enjoy pothos and then the golden pothos just like mixed in here um but yeah it's it's doing well it's like pushing out this one vine right here and same with this one it's, i mean it's directly under the grow light so i'm glad it's not prone to like being burned so easily because of its wax like leaves well the enjoy is pretty thin but also thick at the same time i mean she's doing fine um, so I'm I'm glad I'm keeping her here and she's in this like cool oh hey you see my reflection hey in this cool like um glass bowl which you know it's kind of cool to see you know the roots and to see how like dry it is it's like dry up here but still moist on the bottom so I really like putting them in clear things even though it doesn't have drainage I do have lava rocks on the bottom which is a controversial topic I know people are like you need to have drainage but Sometimes you don't. <laughs> All right, and then over here I have my beautiful peace lily. Um, here is the first flower that she put out, and she is definitely pushing out more. We have one there, and then we have a couple down there. And I recently found uh, what you this one down here. So I'm so happy. Oh, she's so lush. Everyone, get yourself a peace lily, please. Oh, gosh. All right, and moving on. I have this cutting that my coworker got for me because my other cutting um, sadly died on me or I accidentally broke the stem off. It was very sad. But this is the Philodendron Cream Splash. It is doing well. She, The cutting she gave me like had so much roots, so I was like, damn, bless. <laughs> And then over here is another cutting from the same coworker. She got me the um, a little cutting from our Monstera Peru. And then over here I have my red Maranta. Um, she's been through some shit, <laughs> uh, but she's still pushing out new leaves. Like these are the, th the two newest leaves, and this is the oldest leaf. Um, I transported her into a clear jar. Uh, because she kind of needs some like rehab and she's doing okay like again she has two new growths but she did lose the stem um, but she's she's thriving and I'm very proud of her and over here if you're wondering what that is this is my little um gnat catcher it's like I, I just googled it and it says this water, warm water some apple cider vinegar and like a tablespoon of sugar and look at how many gnats I've caught over the last three days. It's disgusting, but so cool. I didn't think it would work because the first night I didn't see any gnats, but then the next morning I was like, holy shit, there's already four in them. And now there's like at least six. So um, yeah, if you have a gnat problem, but you don't want the stickers, the really yellow sticker things, um, try this mixture out. And then over here, I have another cutting. This is the Raphidophora tetrasperma. And fun fact, I made this little pot and um, dish with it. It was my first time throwing on a wheel. So it's a, she's a little like slanted, if you know what I mean. But I, I love it. It's so cute. And I, it, this, uh, this a little, <laughs> I can't speak today this cutting took forever to root like i had it for at least six weeks and it finally showed a little nub of root and i was so happy and ecstatic and i of course let it grow and root even more so the roots were at least an inch long and then i finally potted him into this little guy so he's like a prized possession of mine <laughs> and then here's another cutting gifted for me um by my coworker, she said a customer came in and gave her these cuttings and she was like you want one and i was like 
they scare me. You know, begonias are scary because in uh, in terms of care, they need uh, humidity and stuff. Uh, but I was like, you know what? It's a cutting. I'll give it a shot. And lo and behold, she is budding. All these little babies. Um, and debating whether or not I should, um, like, put her in soil or just wait. I think I definitely might just wait and just keep her in water. Um, because there's roots coming out of everywhere. And I don't want to cover the leaves themselves in soil. So I might just keep her in water for now and then another wish plant of mine that i am so happy to finally have now it's the peperomia incana and it's one of those plants that just has this like cute fuzzy texture it's so soft it's honestly you know you can't i can't keep my hands off of it when i go water my plants i always have to go build I have to be like whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh. and this is my first like actual um, purchase through Etsy everything everything else like came in person like or I bought in person um, this was the first plant that I bought online and had a good experience oh my god so fuzzy okay and then over here I have my aquatica pachira or the money tree this is actually my third money tree <laughs> because um, the money tree was another plant that I first started out with when I started collecting plants last year. And I just kept, they kept getting crispy on me for some reason. Um, and I tried misting them. I put them in like the other room over there that gets brighter light and it just kept getting brown on me. And this is the third time, third time's a charm, right? And it's, you know, this is a new um, leaf that it pushed out and it's not getting as crusty. And I think it's because maybe... I added more plants so they keep each other moist you know the humidity they share and plus it's the humidifies right there so i think that definitely helped this time but i almost gave up on it but i loved you know the braided trunk and yeah i'm glad i didn't give up on it and then down here i have a little haworthia and it actually grew a few uh, centimeters before when I got it. It was at least, you know, the tallest point was up here. But then uh, over the course of the last two months, it, you know, it grew and I'm very happy. I thought it was going to be slower, a slower grower than I thought, but she's pushing it through. Guys, I have my trio star or my stromanthi trio star. I know a lot of people are scared. And I've seen a lot of those reels and TikToks where uh, the voiceover is like, oh, you're a plant parent? Oh, show me your Calathea then. And I definitely felt that. But so far, she's not, you know, she's not dying on me. And she's doing very well, to my surprise. I definitely had to cut some tips off, like here. But it's getting yellow again. Yeah, I had to cut a lot. And I even had to prune a lot. Some a, a couple new growths were actually growing to be crusty, so I just chopped those off. And here's another leaf that I had to cut, and it's already getting crispy. But besides those little imperfections, overall, you know, she's looking fantastic. I can't get over how pretty these like paint like paint stroke like um, pattern looks. Like this very light pink, beige, and light green. Um, I kind of regret getting this pot for it, but I do like the contrast and that the colors stick out more against this black pot. But, you know, I don't want to move her around too much um, and, you know, give her a shock. So I'll just keep her in here. And then up here I have, it's not a skindapsis. It's, I think it's the philodendron silver. That's what my coworker said. Because at first I thought it was a Scandapsis pictus, but the leaves are much smaller. Uh, but she's still in the nursery pot. Because I just want her to vine more before potting her. And this is a temporary setup for now. It's just a janked up DIY hanging situation going on here. Um, but this one grew longer since I've got it. I got this back in like January, I think. So... Slowly but surely, it'll start to vine. Same with this one, but 
I don't mind that they're not binding right now. I kind of like how bushy they look. Bam! And then here is the main window that gets the most light. As you can tell, like my camera is just picking up the outside. But let's start over here because this is the only plant that I keep here on a windowsill for now. And it's the Raven ZZ. Yes, another <laughs> wishless plant. Um, yeah, I mean, not much else to say about it. This speaks for itself, you know, all this black foliage and the way the new growth comes in green, but then starts to turn black over time, which is very cute, very unique for this plant. And I have it in this cool cement pot. And then over here, let's start on the right hand side. I have my little um, scallions when I cook. You know, just keep it here convenient. Like when I run out in the fridge, I at least have backup right here. And then I have my little moss balls. They're all very tiny because they, these, uh, believe it or not, were like non-sellable at the shop. And so we were just going to toss them out. And then I was like, wait, I'll take them. So they look perfectly round. And it's because I've been trying to roll them every time I change the water, just to, you know, form them by hand. And I think that's kind of helping because before um, most of them were, you know, ripping apart. Um, but they look like nice balls now. <laughs> yeah, see <laughs> the little like second attachment on this one. They're all a little bit lumpy, but that's okay. I still love them. Then right next to it, I have my Maria Syngonium. It's like Maria Red or something like that. Um, it's like known for its subtle pinky red hue against this like dark green, like olive green foliage. Like the new leaves will come in more pink and then, you know, mature to be this color. Um, this was not a wishes plant. I had a discount at the Chelsea Garden Center and this is the only interesting plant that I found there. So I just, you know, I was like, why not? I'll get a Syngonium but I really like it, especially with this pot that I got too. It's really cute. Right next to it, I have my Diffenbachia or a dumb cane. And ooh, I love seeing new growth. And I also see, oh, this is a dying new growth, unfortunately. But like behind it, you see another one right there. And then there's more, I'm pretty sure, around it. Like these little guys are so cute. Like that one very happy with this one these two are the most like mobile plants i have on this windowsill like they really like to move towards the light so they can get really lopsided like this one if you can see it's kind of leaning this way because it was facing this way for the last three days and now i'm just like oh no 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 honey you're gonna <laughs> be even okay so I, I twisted her this way and same with the divinbachia if you can see it's <laughs> leaning towards this way because I had it facing this way. Now I'm just like rotating it every three days or so just to make sure it's growing evenly. Um, and then over here is actually a recent addition and it's the Red Majesty Aglaonema. Uh, I didn't know what it was when I first got it, but I wanted to be bold with colors and plants. So I was like, you know what, let's just go all out. Let's just get this one. And I actually didn't know what it was when I got it until I did research. Um, so I still have her in the nursery pot. Ooh. And I like uh, this blue pot that I got. It's kind of a nice um, complementary color with the reddish green and pinky leaves. And then over here, ooh, I have, oh my gosh, my pothos. I have my Schifflera, or the umbrella tree, the variegated one. Very, very cute. I love it so much. And unfortunately, when there's a lot of... See, there's a lot of these, like, all white ones, but unfortunately, they will just fall off because there's no green spots on them for chlorophyll to process, you know, and photosynthesize the sun. So, but at least lean up, some of them have some white and green. Not all of them are all white, which although they look nice, they're just temporary and that's okay. 
And then over here, I have my Domino Peace Lily. Yeah, she just has like little streaks and speckles of white. Very subtle, but still very pretty. Um, I can't wait till she starts flowering. Um, but I got her also recently, maybe in January as well. So I don't expect her to flower, but I would be very excited when she does. <laughs> And then over here, oh my gosh, my prized possession. This is like the main rehab project. I got her actually when I first started working at Pacil and I had no idea what this was. My coworker was just like, this came in from our greenhouse in bad shape. It's not sellable. Um, we're either gonna toss it out or do you want it? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, fuck yeah. Let me, you know, give this a shot. Go all in on this whole plant journey. And she was a wreck. Like, we had to chop some parts off of her because she was all ripped up. But she was showing, like, this tiny new growth. And I'm not sure which one it is now. I think it was this one. Um, it had this little, like, unfurling one. And, it, of course, now it's um, unfurled, all grown out. And she has been working so hard since I've got her. She's pushing out so much growth like this one and oh my good oh my like let me show you look at these little little babies down there oh my gosh and like oh she, there's just like non-stop growth everywhere and i'm so proud of her i'm proud of myself for you know caring for it and oh my gosh i'm just so happy for her because she was in a really rough shape and i wish i took a picture of her state back then but Wow, I'm so glad I didn't give up on her. Because look at her now. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Uh, did I say what this was? Oh, fill an engine moonlight. <laughs> okay, and then uh, down here I have more little babies. This is my, uh, what is it called? Peperomia Ripple. I'm not sure if it's the ruby type because it's not that deep of a purple. It's like a weird light purple greenish color. And then over here I have my cute ass Peperomia Hope. Like, wow, look how cute she is. And she did not have all this long growth when I first got her. She was like like this short. And oh, look at that nap. <sighs> oh, annoying. <laughs> and oh my gosh, look at it. She's putting out new growth. I'm so happy. She actually put out new growth a while ago, but then I accidentally bumped into it and it fell off. So I was like, what the frick? But now she's been gonna come back, you know, summer. I'm really, really excited for this season to see how fast these plants will grow up. But look at it, oh my God, she's so cute. I obviously like to point her towards the light. So that's why she's a little, you know, slanted, but I'm okay with that. And then up here, Woo! This is actually my third pothos, believe it or not. And it's because, the, uh, like I said, or mentioned before, when I first got my first plants, it was a money tree, snake plant, and a pothos. And all of them died, of course. Oh no, the snake plant is still alive. And it's the Laurenti that I just showed you before. But the money tree died and the pothos I surprisingly killed because I think I overwatered it. And then the second pothos I got um, was also in this hanging basket, but I was I left for a month and my boyfriend unfortunately killed it. And now this is the third one and hopefully my last one. Um, I mean, I might get another pothos, who knows? But this is the one that's, you know, third time's a charm is the theme here. And look how far she's grown because when I first got her, I think the longest vine was like this short and now, you know, look at her, look at her, pothos, you know, notorious to grow pretty fast. And I love that about her and I love how bushy and luscious she is on top. How can you not get one of these things? Come on. This is a staple plant. I can't, can you see now? Yes. Here's my busted up philodendron micans. Um, I got it at the same time or from the same shop as I did with the piece, uh, the Domino Peace Lily. And um, unfortunately, through transit, I think to their shop, she got beaten up a little bit. 
but other than that, she is still thriving. She is still pretty in color and really pushing out these vines right here. So I can't complain. Okay, and then last but not least over here, I have my, whoa, I have my, what is it? I forgot the name of it, but it's another type of snake plant and you know, very cool. It's like all tubes. And that's why I mainly got them because he was so different. And you know, you can never have too many air purifying plants. Okay, and that wraps it up for my current houseplant tour. I definitely am proud of myself for not buying many more plants on an impulse because I did catch myself doing that um, when I first started in this plant journey around like January, December. I was like looking at my windowsills and thinking some of these plants don't spark joy in me. And I actually gave some away to a couple of friends to make more room for plants that I actually like love to look at every single day and that actually do spark happiness in me. Um, so I'm, I am proud that I don't have a house or apartment full of plants because not only would that be hard for me to keep up with, I mean, there are definitely people out there who have at least a hundred house plants, like my coworker, like she has so many. And I love that, you know, that these people who are, you know, collectors can really take care of each plant, like have the patience to water each one and stuff. And I was like, you know what, right now, that's not what I need. Um, I just want a few house plants that I can each, you know, care for individually that won't take up a lot of my time. Um, but I definitely do think my collection will grow, um, but just in a more curated way. A few house plants on my wish list uh, um, include the like some of the basic rare plants such as the Monstera Thai constellation, um, the philodendron gloriosum, but other rare plants that aren't as basic, like the philodendron ring of fire, um, this palm-like tree, I forgot the name of it. Um, but those, of course, right now in 2021, on the market, they're quite expensive. I have one more plant that I forgot to share with you. All right, this is the last plant that I actually have in this apartment is and it's a bamboo or a lucky bamboo. This was actually gifted to my partner um, from a client of his and who doesn't like bamboo? It's a staple in every Asian household. <laughs> but um, that is all I have to say about my plants. Um, I can't wait to see how much my collection will grow and change and I hope that you will enjoy this journey with me. Um, if you have any questions or you want more plant videos or you want to correct me on a plant pronunciation or a plant ID, please feel free to do so. I still have yet to know so much more about plants and plant care. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'll see you in the next one then. Bye.